Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Does Science, and today I want to talk about changing basis in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. When we do calculations in quantum mechanics, we have to write states and operators in a particular basis or representation. This means that the very first step in any quantum mechanical calculation is to choose a good basis that will make the maths as easy as possible. In this process, being able to change from one basis to another is essential, and that's what we'll look at today. So without further ado, Let's go! When we perform calculations in quantum mechanics, we invariably write states and operators in a specific representation. You can find all the details in the video on representations, which I link in the description, but as a reminder, a representation is a choice of orthonormal basis in state space in which we write cats, brass, and operators. To see this in more detail, consider a collection of cats u that are mutually orthonormal. These cats u form a basis if we can write any cat psi in our state space in a unique expansion in terms of these u. And we also know that in such an expansion the c coefficients are given by the bracket between u and psi. These c coefficients are called the representation of psi in the u basis. As we also discussed in the video on representations, what we're doing here is analogous to what we do when we work with the familiar Euclidean 3D vectors. We typically consider an abstract vector r, but when we want to do calculations, we have to write it down in terms of a basis, for example in terms of the Cartesian xyz basis vectors. The expansion coefficients are given by the scalar products between the basis vectors and the vector r. Bases work in an analogous manner in both vector spaces. The c coefficients are given by the scalar product between the basis cat u and the state psi of the system, and the expansion coefficients of a Euclidean 3D vector are also given by the corresponding scalar products. In the video on representations, we also learned that we can write down brass in a particular basis like this, where now the expansion coefficients are the conjugates of the cat expansion coefficients, and we can write down operators in a particular basis like this, where the expansion coefficients, called matrix elements, are given by this. In principle, we can solve a quantum problem using cats, brass, and operators written in any basis. However, the maths can be widely different depending on which basis we choose. This is the same that happens when we work with Euclidean vectors. For example, if we have a problem with spherical symmetry, we could use a Cartesian basis to solve it, but the maths would be lengthy and cumbersome. If instead we use a spherical basis, then the maths becomes simple and transparent. In the same spirit, one of the most important steps when solving a problem in quantum mechanics is to choose a good basis before we start. To do this, it is obvious that it will be very important to be able to change from one basis to another, and it is precisely what we'll explore in this video. The central question in this video is how do we go from one representation u to a different representation v? Let's start with cats. First, we write out a cat psi in the u basis, and the expansion coefficients, just like we had earlier, are given by the bracket between the u basis and the state psi. We can also write the same state psi in the v basis, and in this case I call the expansion coefficients d, which in turn are given by the bracket between the corresponding basis state v and the state psi. Changing basis of representation essentially means that given the c coefficients, which are the representation of psi in the u basis, how do we find the d coefficients, which are the representation of psi in the v basis? To answer this question we start by writing dj, as the bracket between vj and psi, then we insert the identity in the middle, and we now get to the critical step of the derivation. We insert the resolution of the identity in the u basis like this. After this, we can move the sum to the beginning, and we end up with sum over i of the bracket between vj and ui times the bracket between ui and psi. This first term is the bracket between vj and ui, which, like any other bracket, is a scalar, and we call it sji. The second term is the bracket between ui and psi, which we recognize as ci. We can then simplify the expression using these definitions, and we get this. What is this telling us? What we can see is that, given the ci, we can find the dj by simply calculating these numbers sji. These sji are given by this bracket, so what this means is that if we go from one representation to another, all we have to do is to calculate the overlaps between the corresponding basis states. The collection of scalars sji are called the overlap matrix. Remembering the video on the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics, 
we can see straight away that we can write this expression as column vector D equal to a matrix with entries S, J, I, multiplying the column vector C, hence the name overlap matrix for S. Now that we have established that we can go from a basis U to a different basis V by calculating the overlap matrix S, J, I, we can ask the opposite question. How do we go from the basis V to the basis U? The proof follows the exact same procedure we just used in the previous slide, and the answer is that ci equals the sum over j of the bracket uivj times dj. We can also write it in terms of the overlap matrix, because using conjugation, uivj is equal to vj ui star, which is equal to sji star. So what does this mean? We can go from u to v by calculating the overlap matrix between the two bases as shown up here, and we can go from v to u by calculating the conjugate of the overlap matrix as shown here. We can summarize these results by stating that we can go in any direction between the u and the v basis by simply calculating the overlaps between the two sets of basis states, and then we either use the overlaps directly or their conjugates. The corresponding expressions for bras are now easy to obtain. We can either repeat the same exercise we have just done for cats, or we can directly transform the expressions for the cats to the dual space. Either way, I leave it to you as an exercise. Now that we know how to transform the representation of states from one basis U to another basis V and vice versa, the next question is how do we transform the representation of operators between bases? We know that operators are represented by the corresponding matrix elements, so we start by writing the matrix element of operator A in the U basis, and we also write the matrix element of the same operator A in the V basis. We conventionally use the same letter as the operator for the matrix elements, in this case A, so I have added these superscripts u here and v here to keep track of which basis we're writing the operator in. The transformation question for operators becomes, given the aik in the u basis, how do I find the ajl in the v basis? The answer is in fact very similar to the one we provided for the transformation of cats. We start by writing the matrix element ajl in the v basis. We then insert two identity operators. And now we come again to the crucial step of the derivation. We resolve both identities in the U basis. We now move both sums to the beginning, and we get sum over i k of the bracket between v j u i, then the matrix element of A in the U basis, and then the bracket u k v l. Remembering the definition of the overlap matrix, we recognize this term as the overlap matrix S j i and this term as the complex conjugate of the overlap matrix SLK. This term here in the middle is the matrix element A in the U basis, and putting all of this together we end up with sum over IK of SJI AIK in the U basis SLK star. So what does this mean? Given the representation of the A operator in the U basis, we can find the corresponding representation in the V basis by calculating the overlap matrices SJI and SLK star. We can again use a similar procedure to prove the opposite relation, and the final answer is this. Putting everything together, we have found that transforming from one basis U to another basis V requires the calculation of the overlap matrix SJI between the two bases. Once we have this overlap matrix, we can use it to transform states from the U basis to the V basis, or we can use its conjugate to transform state in the reverse order from the V basis to the U basis. Similarly, we use the overlap matrix and its conjugate to transform operators from U to V or from V to U. The ability to change from one basis to another is central in quantum mechanics because choosing a good basis can greatly simplify the maths. For a concrete example of changing basis, Take a look at the video on wave functions. In that video, we look at changing from the position to the momentum basis. We use the ideas we've learned today, and we find that the position and momentum representations are related by a Fourier transform. As always, if you like the video and would like to send me suggestions for future videos, please subscribe.